After a very eventful Von D. Globe Jeremy Boyo has signed a new Cheryl boat deal worth 5 to 6 million euros to compete in the 2024 race. The shapes were handed in at the beginning of April, the molds are currently under construction and will be delivered on July 7, 2021. The design of the foils will be completed by the end of October 2021, the boat will be decked in March before a launch in June 2022. Cheryl 2 will be built by CDK Technologies in Loria. This is the Sailing World on Water, July 2, 2021. Here are our highlights of the sport of sailing, globally, in the last seven days. Well we've shown you Cheryl 1 going into the water after its winter refit. So while he's waiting for his new boat, Jeremy will sail Cheral 1, which has had a new bow fitted. The boat will then be sold during the second half of 2022. The frustrations of a challenging year were blown away as a solid sailing breeze kicked in to help celebrate the opening day of the 25th anniversary of Super Yacht Cup, Palma. Near ideal conditions graced the Bay of Palma, delivering tight and exhilarating racing, on a 23 nautical mile course to the nine strong fleet of superyachts. The sunshine was bright and the breeze was light at the Block Island Race Week presented by Margaritaville. After months of anticipation to get back out on the water, post pandemic, the 158 teams were eager to go. In Sydney, the MC 38 fleet had their third regatta on pit water at the Royal Prince Alfred Yacht Club. It was like a bucket of ice had been dumped on the fleet but the racing was hot. The hooligans won. Last week we had part two of the sailing squad who now are on the starting line, competing against 400 sailboats. It's time to put into practice what they have been taught over the last two days. The race across Lake Geneva is a real challenge. Physical, strategic and, above all, human. One of the great stories to come out of the recent Von D. Globe race was British sailor Pip Hare, who battled the elements, and her boat, to finish. Yes she'll be back, with a foiling boat. Day 3 of the 2021 Tiberias PWA World Cup proved to be the most exciting yet, as the Finns tried to battle back against the foils in the men's, a couple of new faces claimed their maiden bullets on the world tour, in the women's. We listen into the crew of the huge Trimaran Bank Populaire as they scream over the ocean, training. They are talking, sailing? No, it's tennis. It's day one of the first world championship with a new format, for boards and sails of slalom series. Once again Torbol, the mecca of windsurfing, opens together with the international funboard class, the path for a new discipline. Now over to the superyachts in Parma. Fifth anniversary of the Super Yacht Cup this year, and we've had some fantastic racing over the years. Fantastic to be back sailing again. I mean, the, the last time most people were racing so big sailboats was more than a year and a half ago. Normally there's a venue where owners and, and crew can mix really easily. And it's a bit more of a big family affair. Watching the owners enjoy their vessels in these beautiful, beautiful yachts. And getting on the race course and pushing these, these boats to the limits, really. <laughs> Thank you.
That's what I love about sailing, being obviously racing at Olympic and at Paralympic level and, and now to be racing you know, in the Super Yacht Cup is uh, a completely different world entirely. Fantastic, amazing, unbelievable actually. Before this regatta we hadn't even hoisted a spinnaker, let alone goat racing with the boat, so it's the first time this boat's ever gone that way. And uh, yeah, really happy. You know, and I commend the, 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 the Super Yacht Cup and the Yacht Club that are getting racing, you know, putting our sport back to where it was. Just congratulations to them for pulling this off safely. Uh, it's fantastic that uh, this is the 25th uh, version of, uh, of the Super Yacht Cup. Of I'm happy, of course. Uh, I really appreciate it, how they organized it still and uh, tried to make it a good race. Uh, so uh, it was nice racing. We really enjoyed it. Block Island Race Week to me is just a spectacular week. I look forward to it every two years. I love being on Block Island. Block Island Race Week has been fantastic for the competitors. I'm definitely anticipating a lot of pent up energy on the start line today. Um, I'm just really excited to get out there, race hard against some really good competitors. The sailing is great, but also the social side of it is really good fun too. So it's, it's just a great all around regatta really. I've been having a fabulous time off the boat as well as on the boat. I like coming to Block Island because it's a fun place to play and have fun. I love seeing new and old friends here from all different places. Uh, it's just an awesome week. There's a blend of windward lure around the island, a little bit of navigator, and we all have a good time here. So we party until the sun goes down and then we go to bed and start all over again. So it's a good time. Yeah. We are super excited to be hosting this year's race week. We uh, had a lot of questions as we led up to this over the last year, whether or not we were going to be able to do it at all. As it turns out, we were able to have a full deal with social events and a tent, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing everybody and actually shaking hands. Yeah, this is uh, really the highlight sailing event for the year. And now that we're all back out of our cocoons or whatever you want to call them in our caves, that's just uh, exciting to see people again and, and really uh, energizing. Well, you know, last year was COVID and in fact, 15 months is the longest I've been since I was 10 years old without going across the starting line. So we were ready, eager, and raring to go. The whole pandemic situation has pent up demand for us to do some one design sailing and to have fun partying with our competitors. It's been a weird year, but we're all happy to be back and good to see everyone's faces unmasked. <laughs> What's new this year is what's old. We are back here at Champlain's Marina and Resort where race week started in 1965. The team here has been absolutely fantastic to work with. They uh, pulled out all stops. What's new again this year is that the race week buttons have come back because they're really not new. We used them in 1973 and 1975 and I had these in my sock drawer for the last 50 years. Block Island race weeks have you done? Three. 
This is my first Block Island Race Week. This is our second time. So this is my second Block Island Race Week. This will be my fourth. Well, this is our fourth or fifth time racing here. I think my first one was in 1983 on a Wavelength 24. It's 1976. This is my 19th race week. First race week, 1971. 1969. Oh, no. First race week was in 1965. This is my eighth one since then. This is my 16th, I think my 16th Block Island Race Week. It's awesome to go sailing. Uh, beautiful to be out here. We're having a great time. All the boats going around the marks at the same time. It's yeah. all about the one design all getting together. We have a really big fleet of 13 boats and it was great to see everybody in really close competition. We've had great winds. We've had a little fog. We've had a lot of fun. All of our expectations are being met. Now we're gonna be able to take in all the gorgeous views of Block Island as we uh, circumnavigate this wonderful location. We had a great time at Block Island Race Week. We look forward to seeing you guys in two years. <laughs>
This race is unbelievably difficult to do well in. This is your adventure. The mountains and even the color changes, it's really beautiful. So it take just five seconds to look at it because it's an amazing sightseeing. Everyone is in race mode. You can feel like the excitement in the team. We'll see how it goes. The forecast uh, looks quite hard. We feel ready to take on what is going to be a, a pretty long, difficult day. Pace ourselves. And we just work through you know, one hour and then another hour and then another hour, keeping an eye on, on what might happen in our future. The start will be probably the most stressful moment. It's 400 boats all together with very, very little wind. 19, 18, 17, 16. Oh. We, we just did a great start, now it's, uh, now it's a bit of stress because we need to get out of the pack. The well, more pressure is coming from up there, it's going to be better. I have a bit more pressure now. Now we are trying a strategy to, to open a bit the game more to the Swiss coast to get more wind. I think the pressure on this side looks pretty equal right now. They have a lot less wind, so keep the separation, sail the fast number. We are in a difficult moment. The, just the, the boats ahead completely stopped and we are entering in a, like, in a no wind zone, it's a mess. We just had a little bit of a stressful uh, sail change. Like you see, they already have the spinnaker on and we don't, so it's like a bit of a rush. It's been very hot on board, and I think, yeah, yeah as a team, we still haven't really gelled together yet. Now a bit more than half of the race. We had quite a lot of ups and downs. We started really good, then really bad, then really good again, then really bad. Switzerland looks like Costa Rica. We still have three quarters of a lake to go and we're right with our opposition. It's about to get dark and we need to switch into night mode. We need to stay focused. Well, I have something to show you. Here it is. There you go. This is what I was presented on Saturday for making it all the way around the world. It's amazing. It's really heavy, actually. It's satisfyingly heavy. It should be heavy, shouldn't it? Um, I'm so proud. I'm so proud <laughs> to be the owner of one of these. Because I know, you know, I fought for this. It was a great day on Saturday. Um, uh, really nice to see all the other skippers, to swap some stories. You know, we couldn't have the big party that we'd been hoping for, but we had a lovely lunch on the terrace and it, you know, it's just a great opportunity to talk to people that I didn't get after the race. So I enjoyed it. And it's kind of like Bond Day 2020. It's a wrap. So just as one 
chapter closes, so another one begins, and you are joining me on board the new medallia, um, formerly Louis Berton's Bureau Valley, uh, which came third in the last race, so it's great to see him get his trophy, uh, and now it's going to be medallia. Um, so I'm just on board today, none of my team are with me, um, they're tied up on the ocean race and I'm going to be racing the ocean race as well on one leg with, with Louis on the new Bureau Valley which is exciting. Uh, so I've just popped in today just to make a few lists and get my head around a few things and and I kind of, I do remember, I do remember the first time I kind of was on my own with Super Bigu um, at the start of my whole Imoka journey and my Vondi journey and I remember just wondering you know how I was going to feel in two years time where I would end up what it would be like and and I kind of sitting here now in the cockpit thinking the same things really it's so different this next time is going to be so different having a team having a boat that's more high performance boiling um, it's going to be an exciting journey and, and I think I'm going to develop so much as a sailor and I can't wait for that but you know just looking at the inside of this cockpit what's this going to mean to me how am I going to feel about being in here when I'm in the southern ocean there's so much to look forward to it's going to be brilliant Welcome to day number three here in Israel for the Tiberius PWA World Cup and what a day it has been. We've had amazing action on the water, but don't just take my word for it, let's check out the highlights. So there's been some epic battles, fin versus foil, like we've never seen them before. The biggest movers and shakers up into third place in the overalls, Matteo Yukino. Really solid day for him today, finishing second in that last race. Uh, up into second, William Huber. He's been on the file all day and he's been putting in some pretty amazing performances. Second and a fourth, but at the top of the tree with two perfect races. Guess who it is? Nicholas Goya. Yeah, he looks unstoppable at this competition. With only two days left, can anybody beat him? In the women, we had action in the foil and fin categories, and we had two new winners. Yes, in the women's slalom, Sarah Jackson from the UK absolutely stormed it. From start to finish, put together the perfect result and got a first ever win. In the women's foil, Hella Oppendahl took her first win. It was some crazy conditions with some big crashes, but she went through to take her first win. In the overalls, it's Marion Mortifon who is leading both the fin and the foil. We have two days left. We have plenty of wind and plenty more action to come. But if you want to stay up to date with everything, make sure you tune into the live stream on PWAWorldTour.com and don't miss any of the action. Roland Garros, Roland Garros. 
Garros sur BPM. C'est joli, hein, comme si elle. Oui C'est des orages de chaleur, on a ça à Saint-Malo aussi. Par contre, t'as vu, ça bombarde quand même. un épisode de Mad Max, euh, Fury Road, Fury, Fury Sea. Euh, un gros orage qui, euh, qui était derrière nous, qui a gonflé, qui a gonflé, qui nous a rattrapé même si euh, on était plutôt, euh, plutôt très rapide. À 42, il a réussi à nous rattraper. On a...